it's now been about a month since the full release of FM24, and in that time, I've managed to clock up about 400 hours of playtime, including four promotions, five Premier League wins, multiple Champions Leagues, lots of other stuff along the way. It's fair to say it's going quite well. So I figured, who better than me to offer you some tips on how to get better at FM24? So these are my top tips for Football Manager 2024. And if you've got some tips of your own, let me know down in the comments section as well. I am more than happy to do a second part of this video where we just put together a collection of your tips. I already did this on Twitter and I've got a few of your tips coming up at the end of the video as well. But fill the comments section up. Let's get a big collection of all the football manager tips, starting with this one. And this one is a simple one and it is just use the agents in the game. They've been in the game for a few years now, but they've never been more powerful than they are in FM24. And the key thing is to always, always, always talk to agents before renewing contracts or discussing anything to do with contracts. You want to do this when you're buying players as well, but specifically when you're renewing contracts. Let's say we want to renew Anana's contract. He's out of contract at the end of the season. Um, he's currently on £65,000 a week. You always, always, always click discuss new contract with agent before going into the contract negotiations because you can invariably push their demands down. So you can see his agent is saying he would want between 67 and £83, £83, £83,000 per week. Um, and you can push him down for me. You can also push down his playing expectations, um, his contract length. You could, Basically, you can do a lot of the negotiating here before negotiations start. But the thing that I always do is an absolute minimum is try and push down the amount of money that he's looking for. And you can see by clicking that button, we take his expectations down to between 60 and 75, down from 67 to 83. If we're happy to go with that, we agree and then go straight into the contract negotiations. If we're not, we can... Just well, still not happy. You lose, you lose nothing by doing this. But if we agree with that and then go into our contract negotiations with him, um, his demands should then be considerably lower. So he's gone in at the top end, but we know his agents just said that he might go a little bit lower. So I don't know. Let's try and push him down a little bit further. Um, if we can take him down to 65, for example, he's ticking his heels in, isn't he? I mean, 75 is still lower than what his original expectation is. Remember, there you go. We've got him down to 72. With a little bit more shenanigans, we probably could have got that down even further and reduced some of this stuff as well. But a contract that was potentially going to cost us 85 thousand pounds a week plus without the agent we've got in at 72 and we're happy with that deal so we've saved ourselves some money similarly when buying plays you want to make use of the agents and even more crucially than making use of agents you need to be making use of paying on installments i know from my own comment section that some of you get very upset when i do all my transfers on installments you have to decide how far you're willing to take this because you can pretty much stretch any size transfer budget as far as you want if you use these installments in a smart way and effectively end up with unlimited money to spend and the game kind of lets you get away with it it's supposedly supposed to have consequences on future transfer budgets it kind of doesn't and more often than not you'll get cash injections from the board or mysterious sponsorships that appear to cover it off anyway and it's very rare you can get yourself in serious trouble doing it so decide how far you want to take this one but as an example still in this Everton save let's say we want to sign follow in Balogun um, who he has a transfer range of between 85 and 99 million our transfer budget is 61 million pounds of Everton so we can't afford him but we're going to talk to talk to his agent anyway and um, we're interested in a deal um, and straight away they're telling us the kind of range we'd need to get him for so actually this is a more accurate range it's between 86 and 103 million and he's going to be looking for 165 to 230 thousand pounds per week well firstly we can say well I, I mean come on then let's try and push him down it didn't actually work to push him down wow okay more often than not, it does work, but that's luckily not the bit we're demonstrating here. The bit we're demonstrating is using installments. Um, so we now know that it's up to 103 million. And usually what you can do, if you're going to be using installments, you tend to have to go towards the higher range here. Um, but we could, we should potentially be able to get, let's say, a quarter of his transfer fee up front. And then we can stick the rest of this on installments and probably 
get him. Um, so we could put, we could even put like 75 million on installments there. So that brings us to a total of 103 million. So we've gone to the top of his range, but only committing 28 million up front. We can suggest those terms straight away. They accept them. Again, it's a simplified example for the purposes of the video. Um, if you're doing this yourself, you could try and start lower and get like negotiate and maybe save yourself five to 10 million pounds somewhere in here. Take advantage of future fees. Um, things like sell-on clauses that can all lead to you lowering the amount of money that you're spending. But for the purposes of what we're showing here, what we've actually done is got ourselves in a position where we can buy a £100 million plus player and it only takes £28 million out of our wage budget for this season and will still leave us with £30 million plus to spend this year, which we now know could be another £100 million plus player. Theoretically, it's supposed to do a budget deduction of £25 million a year for the next three years afterwards as well. It doesn't. It never has. Maybe one day it will, but I've been doing this in Football Manager for years. It really doesn't do that. You can you can abuse this if you want to. And some saves, like my Chelsea beta save, I absolutely abuse it. Some say it's like non to legend. We don't abuse it. We try and keep things realistic. But the key thing to remember when rationalising this in your brain is this is how transfers are done in real life. Transfers are always done on instalments. It's up to you how far you take it because this area of the game is broken. So I guess a little bit exploity. But who cares? Because we're bringing in another striker to Everton. This next tip probably could and should have been the first tip because it's arguably more of a uh, an overall methodology of playing football manager than an isolated tip. And it, it boils down simply to don't overcomplicate things. Football manager at its core is a very simple game. Live like Bill Shankly. I think his quote was, football is a simple game overcomplicated by idiots. Hold on. Got the proper quote. Football is a simple game complicated by idiots. That was the uh, famous Bill Shankly quote, and it absolutely applies to Football Manager. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You do not need to design your own fancy super duper tactic from scratch that has inverted this, that, and the other, and lopsided I mean, you, I mean, you could, you don't need to do all this. And then, oh, this guy needs to be a libero. Um, and this guy should probably be, we want an inverted wing back on both sides. And then we want him to be a half back because then when they all push forward, you'll end up with the back two, which will be these two. And then you have three. You don't need to do all that. You can do all that. And if that floats your boat, if you have fun doing that, absolutely fill your boots, have your fun. Football Manager is a single-player game. You play it how you like. However, what I would say is if you're trying to win, don't do this because it overcomplicates it and it is absolutely not needed. All you need to do to be successful at Football Manager, and I told you my credentials at the start, if you need more, I've won the streamer showdown more times than anybody else ever. Until I stopped playing in it as often, I'd won it more times than everyone else combined. That was up against all of your Football Manager tactics geniuses. Beat them all. Won the league in the network game against Zealand, Ben, and Work the Space. I, I beat them all, you know? I, I, I'm, I'm the guy who always wins. And we do it as simple as possible. You just, you need one tactic that suits your players. And the easiest way to do it is to just take the game's advice. So in this Everton save, we, we've clicked create new tactic. We've got three different thumbs ups. Go with one of the thumbs ups. I know people will say, oh, just do four, two, three, one Gagan press. It's not quite that simple. Four, two, three, one Gagan press with the right squad and the right players is fantastic. If you try and do it in non league, probably isn't going to work because you're not going to have the fitness levels to do it. But with a Premier League club, two right, we're going to try Gagan press to choose formation. We've got various different options, but what do you know? A four, two, three, one Gagan press is the one that's getting the thumbs up. So that's going to fit our team really, really well. You can then have a look to see who your best 11 is and then 
adjust it to fit your best 11. I'm not saying just use it completely out of the box, um, but like Dennis Simon, our goalkeeper in this save, his best role is as a sweeper-keeper on support. Let him do his best role. You want to get your best players in their best roles. Calvert-Lewin, pressing forward on attack, it's the one on the tactic. Neto wants to be a winger on support. Let him be a winger on support. There you go, winger on support. Noosa, winger on support. Right, well, we kind of want one of our wingers to be on attack. How do we decide which one? Um, well, we could have a look to see one, which one's got the best finishing. Again, keeping it really, really simple. Um, so that would be that would be Neto. So we can push him forward on attack. Um, we've then got Coop Miners in there who wants to be a playmaker in that role. So we can make him a playmaker on support because that's what he wants. Um, we've then got Kaita who want who can be an anchor, defensive midfielder, Segundo Valente, halfback. He's pretty good at all of that stuff. Uh, Timber. Well, again, pretty good at most of it, but actually prefers to be a playmaker. So we can have him as a playmaker, have him maybe as a defensive midfielder. I actually might make him an attacking midfielder because I did an interview with Miles years ago and he said only use one playmaker. You could absolutely get away with using two playmakers here, but we're keeping it simple. Um, we've then got a winger on that side on attack and one on this side on support. So we want to just reverse it with our wing backs. We'll have him on attack, him on support. And then over here, we're just going to make sure that these guys are doing the thing they're best at, um, which for uh, Querfelt is ball playing defender, which he's already on. Branthwaite, also ball playing defender. So we'll play with two ball playing defenders. I've lost the tactic. There we go. Two ball playing defenders. And there we have it. We'll get rid of this other tactic because we don't need it. Clear that one off. Make sure that one is the one that was being trained. That's our tactic. You don't need to change this so you have a different one for home and away. You don't need to change it if you're winning, losing or drawing with 20 minutes, half an hour to go, anything like that. You don't need to be fiddling with any of this stuff. You don't need to have various different variations of it. Seriously, it's a very simple game. You can just pick the best players to play in this tactic that we know will work because it's the one our assistant manager has recommended and we can see the players that we've got match up with it nicely and you will win far more often than you will lose. And if you do hit a run of form where things aren't going well, that's the key time to not overcomplicate things because that's the game testing you. If you start losing matches, just keep doing what you know works. The only time you need to vary from this, really, is when you get that inbox message saying you're not willing to experiment. At that point, by all means, go through the process again. Maybe try the next best tactic that's recommended to you. But you don't need to be changing your tactics to meet your opposition weaknesses. You don't need to be making mid-game adjustments. You don't need to be changing everything to fit different players into different places. Just get tell them where to play. If you have to play Calvert-Lewin on the wing, play him on the wing because he'll be fine and he'll learn to get good on the wing. In fact, in this save, he's been playing on that left-hand side quite a lot. That's why he's accomplished out there. So it is it is a simple game. You don't need to overcomplicate it. You certainly don't need to... You don't you you don't ever need to be going anywhere near the data hub. You don't need to be doing complex player search filtering stuff. You can find all the best players by your scouts because your scouts will find them. You can buy them cheaply if you use installments and then use the agents to bring the price down. Tactics are simple. Pick the one that works and stick with it and it will almost certainly be based on a preset because the only tactics that don't ever work at all are the ones that you randomly put together and they were never going to work in the first place. So just pick one of the presets, tweak it to suit your players and let it, let it go and you'll win matches. And if you don't believe me, come and watch me on stream doing exactly that. Watch my videos and watch me doing exactly that. It's it's quite straightforward. Get the best players in the best positions in a tactic that suits them and then get out of their way and they'll win. You don't need to do training. You don't need to have lots of different tactics. You don't really need to know very much at all about football because I don't. We do all right. One area where you do need to do a little bit of fiddling though is morale. Morale in Football Manager is king. Now, full disclosure, I'm recording this the day after the patch has just come out and the patch announced that it has fixed some of the player mutiny stuff. That has been a huge issue in FM24. So it's a little early to say, and it might not be quite so over the top as it has been previously, but certainly 
in my first 400 or so hours on FM24, it has been pretty clear the only thing you have to keep a really close eye on and the thing you have to really closely manage is morale. Because if you start to get some unhappy players, you then start to get mutinies. You start to get players agreeing with all the unhappy players and uh, it's just snowballs. And as soon as you've got a team that's unhappy, as soon as that club atmosphere starts dropping, then you start playing poorly. And there is nothing you can do tactically to fix that. The only thing you can do is fix the morale. And there's a few different ways you can go around doing it. Way number one, just give in. <laughs> you might you might not like it, but sometimes just give in. Um, like Jared Brandwaite, for example, in this save, wants to move to a bigger club. I could argue with him. I could I could dig my heels in and try and make him stay. But ultimately, he's not gonna he's not gonna discuss a new contract because he doesn't want to be here. So we can't make him stay long term. He's only got a year left on his deal. We could have him run down his contract and then let him go on a free transfer at the end of it. But whilst that's happening, he's going to be unhappy and he's going to be making the players around him unhappy. Just sell him. Just get him gone. All of these players who are unhappy, just get rid of them. I mean, that is basically the the crux of my summer transfers every single summer. The job is, right, have a look at the squad. Who's unhappy? Get rid of all of them and then replace them and fill the squad back up again. But job number one is always get rid of everybody who's unhappy. And it doesn't matter how important they are to the way you play. If you watch non to Legend, you'll have seen me release on a free transfer our 30-goal-a-season best striker, Dan Creaney, because he was leading a player immunity. We just got rid of him. If you watch me on Twitch with Anchor Edemiaspor, you'll have seen me just sack six players on the spot. We basically got rid of half of our first team just because they were in a mood. We got rid of arguably our six best players and then went on a winning run because morale went up. You've got to keep on top of the morale. So give the players what they want. If you if you have to promise them something to get them back on side, then make sure you follow through on the promise. If you've promised someone you're going to play them regularly, play them regularly. If you're not going to play them regularly, don't promise them it. Just sell them. Just get rid of them. But whatever you do, stay on top of team morale. If you notice morale is starting to fall and you don't have any players who are obviously unhappy, there are a few other cheeky little tw tweaks and tips and things you can do as well. Arrange a friendly against a local team and just beat them 8-0. That'll give you a nice little confidence boost. They'll like that. That's usually, a, that's usually a thing that helps. You can go through and praise conduct. I mean, it's very, very cheesy. I very rarely do this. But if someone is really struggling, you can just go into action, speak about, praise player. And if you've got nothing specific to praise them about, so if they're not playing well, they're not training well, um, you can just praise their conduct and just getting a little pat on the head will cheer them up. You can't do it too often. If you go to the well too many times, they do start to figure it out and not it doesn't have as much of an impact, but used sparingly, you can praise conduct, conduct and it will give everyone a nice little boost. Team meetings, I wouldn't ever recommend doing them just off your own back, but if you ever get the inbox message suggesting you do one, just do it. And not only do it, do it by following the instructions that have been put on the screen for you. I actually had this come up on stream last night. I'm going to just jump back to that and show you an example of what I mean. But you basically, the game tells you what to say to the players. That is the only right answer. This is the same for the pre-season team meetings, all that kind of stuff. The game will tell you what the right answer is. Do the right answer because everything else is the wrong answer and will have a, a negative impact. J just stick in a stream highlight here. Right, we should focus on our recent good form and reinforce the positive feeling around the club. Okay. Um, we're hitting form at exactly the right time during the running, but we need to find an extra gear. Um, is that meeting? We've not... No, we have been in good form. I think that's the one we're supposed to click. This whole interaction thing, they should just bin this off because it is literally a case of reading that line and then trying to work out which one of those boxes is the correct one to tick based on what is said there. There's no freedom of thought and doing what you would do in real life in those scenarios. You have to just do what the game tells you to do, so it may as well not be there. I save scum those interactions quite often. I hate them. If you just do the one it tells you to do, you get it right every time. It's 100% of the time the correct one is the one that they tell you to do and every other one is wrong. So just do the one they tell you to do. That can be one of my tips. 
on my video that I'll record tomorrow. And that's it for my tips. If you follow those tips, you will be good at Football Manager. It's that easy. I've also got quite detailed tutorials on almost all of that stuff here on the channel as well. So if you want to dig a little bit deeper, have a look around the tutorials playlist. And if there's any of that stuff you'd like to see me go deeper on, let me know down in the comments section and it'll give me ideas for future tutorial and guide videos. But as I said at the start, I did ask on Twitter or X or whatever we're allowed to call it now for your tips and we got loads of responses. As you can see, over 100 responses. I'm just going to pick out some of the best ones of these, quick fire style. Some of this stuff I've not tested. I'm certainly not going to read through all of them, but some of these are making some pretty good points. So um, this one, get your staff sorted out as early as possible. Seems to help me almost as much as a decent tactic. Completely agree with that. One of the first things I do, if not the first thing I do when I arrive at a new club, is make sure that we've got staff in place. You want this staff screen. You want these bars to be as close to the top here as you can possibly get. And if they're not, get them there. I mean, we're not quite there in this Everton save because we're Everton. We're not going to have the best coaches in the league, at least straight away, but we can certainly be working towards it. And you definitely want to have good staff in place and also get those good staff doing the things that you don't want to do. Um, so for example, they're doing my media for me because I'm not doing my own media. They're doing my training for me because I'm not going to be doing my training. Get your staff sorted it is a massive difference maker. This one as well, use the dugout and rest people. Resting people is so important. We talked before about not having the right kind of squad to play a Gagan press. One of the key things is no matter what squad you've got, if you want to play a high intensity, high pressing tactic and you're playing more than one match a week, you absolutely need to be resting the entire team for two to three days after every single match or else your fitness will just... Rest your players. Another great one here. Doesn't matter how bad your team is. Have a tall centre-back with good heading and jumping reach. Use any corner tactic and he'll score 15 plus. The game is broken. I would adjust that slightly because of the way the new set-piece creator works. It doesn't have to be a centre-back. You just need a big guy to be there on that near post when those corners are come in, coming in. But you've seen it in pretty much every save I've done. If you have a big, tall boy and you aim your corners at him, he will score goals for fun do it. It would be mad not to do it. We've got another one here that I forgot to mention when I was talking about sorting morale, training and team bonding. Um, what that means is if you, <laughs> you two can see I've never touched training on this save. Um, if you want to get that morale, those dynamics to increase quickly, one thing you can do on training, and I wouldn't recommend touching training too often, but there are two things that I do like to add on to training. One of them is extracurricular team bonding um, because that will help improve dynamics. And also we're not going to be able to show it because we don't have a match to review um in fact i think we can put it in here because we played on the sunday the day after a match you can also do match reviews um those two you can actually see what they do um if you have a look on this screen um we can't show you match review there because it's already selected but extracurricular right brilliant can we, uh, can we just show you what team bonding does? There you go. If you click on it, it does show you the areas that it increases. And both match reviews and team bond bonding do help massively with team cohesion and just your dynamics in general. So if these things are low, a great way to increase them is to just touch training as as fiddly as it seems, just do those two things and just do them every week until you've got your team cohesion up and uh, that'll fast track you there. Love this one. Free transfers are the absolute best way to be good in FM. Some context for that. If you're lower than championship level, you shouldn't ever be paying a transfer fee because you can seriously build a easy promotion winning team in any division from league one down with just free transfers and loans you don't need to pay transfer fees until you're much higher up and even once you get higher up the real bargains the real gems are probably still going to be free transfers whether that's youngsters released by big teams or old folk who can come in and give you a bit of experience for a couple of years free transfers are great you need to stay on top of them i'm going to link to this twitter thread and put this in the description below because it, this is full of tips but the one I wanted to end on, don't let anyone tell you you're playing it wrong. It's a single player game. Have fun with it. And that one probably is the most cru crucial one, which I realise the irony of me saying that at the end of a video where I've been telling you how to play the game, but it's a single player game. Play it how you want. Enjoy it. If you want to be successful, I've given you lots of tips on how to do that in this video, but if you're just enjoying what you're doing anyway and you don't care if you're winning matches or not, do it literally however you want. 
It's a single player game. Have your fun. But that brings me to the end of my little collection of quick tips to get better at Football Manager 2024. Like I said at the start, if you've got tips of your own, fill the comments section up with them. And if we get enough good new ones, we'll do another video offering even more tips on how to get better at FM24. But hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on it for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.